welcome to Waynesburg, population 4,100. This is the heart of Pennsylvania coal country, the third largest coal producing county in America. But like so many communities whose fortunes rise and fall with the mines, the last decade has been a struggle. Mines have shut down. A third of the coal jobs are gone. Two years ago, Marvin Locker saw the writing on the wall. After five years in the mines, with layoffs coming in waves, he needed a way out. His sister Amanda heard about his situation and had an idea. Ditch the mine for a mouse. I didn't know much. You know, I could get on Facebook and basic things, but I didn't have any, I didn't even know what coding was. Amanda Locker had moved away to Chicago and become a successful software developer. Her idea, return home, gather miners, wives, anyone from town they could help, and along with her partner Jonathan, teach them to code. It's not a new idea that people want to change careers and tech is, you know, severely lacking in talent in the U.S., so it was just kind of a natural thing. At first, the idea of teaching miners to write the language of modern software didn't seem natural at all. But before long, they started to realize the transition from digging coal to sifting through code wasn't as hard as they thought. They work really hard, um, and they're very diligent and very detail-oriented. And they're extremely team-oriented. These team-oriented skills are really hard to find with software developers who go through the traditional path. So they're coming out of the mine with team skills, professional skills. The idea evolved into Mind Minds, part training center, part consultancy. Through grants, the nonprofit offers a free 16-week course. Amanda and Jonathan then hire the grads who go right to work on everything from websites to new apps. While not guaranteed, Mind Minds has yet to have anyone finish without work waiting for them. Because they've got the professional skills already and they've got up-to-date technologies that they know how to work with, I would hire them over any you know, four-year grad, um, somebody just out of college, any day. The company has been a beacon of hope in this town where the reminder of better times is never far away. Close to 500 people lost their jobs when the Emerald Coal Mine closed here in 2015. And industry estimates say that when one coal job is lost, it affects four others in the region. Oh, okay. So I need to make sure I'm pulling the right ones too. That ripple effect is what inspired Jennifer Grudai to take the course. Her husband still works in the mines, but she tried to convince him the future is computers, not coal. There's no guarantee. There really isn't. You never know. But this industry will always be and will always grow. And there's always something. You can do code in anywhere, from anywhere. Any business needs a coder. But coding isn't for everyone, and the pull of the mine is hard to resist. The Cumberland Mine, just outside of Waynesburg, is still going and has been hiring back some laid off workers. Former miner, now job counselor Dave Baer, says it's hard to turn away from a job when you can make more than $100,000 a year. The money. The money is where everybody likes to be. Because there's a lot of jobs around here paying 12, 13, 14 bucks an hour, not $30 an hour. That's what coal miners used to make them. Basically, you know what this says? You know what it says, right? You're going back to work. That's right. <laughs> You're going back to work. Thanks to Donald Trump, some are optimistic about the industry again. In coal country, there's the feeling that finally they have someone in the White House that speaks to them. In March, Trump signed an executive order ending former President Obama's clean power plan. That plan would have shut down coal plants. He also lifted a ban on coal mining on federal land, telling miners, better days are ahead. I made them this promise. We will put our miners back to work. Promises like that on the campaign trail helped fuel Trump's surprise win in Pennsylvania. Here in Greene County, he took nearly 70 percent of the vote. That's why Brian Shriver voted for Trump. After repeated layoffs, he went to study electricity maintenance. While working part-time at a fast food restaurant, he ran out of money for school. He's now back working in the mine. When I think of Donald Trump, I think he's a man of his word. Uh, I, a lot of politicians always say this and say that and decide they're not going to 
follow through with their promises, and so far he's followed through with his promises, and he's bringing coal mining back. But restoring an industry in decline is an uphill battle. Production is down 20% over the last 15 years. Coal mining has lost more than 70% of its workforce since the mid-80s. And because of automation, some jobs simply won't come back. That's why at this job fair, where truck driving is the best job prospect for former miners, Trump's words may give hope to some, but others, like former miner Sean Tharp, are cautious. Right now, I don't know, I'm up and down with it. Uh, sometimes, you know, I watch him on TV, I don't feel like he's doing enough to help any coal miners out or, you know, keeping his promises to them. Back at Mind Minds, Amanda Locker says Trump can only do so much. I think most people think that it will make the bleed happen slower, right? Pe people will lose jobs slower than they have been. But in the end, it's not Trump's fault that the jobs went away, and it won't be his fault that they'll come back. They're not going to come back. Amanda is quick to point out, though, her company isn't the savior, just a first step to bringing more and diverse jobs to the region. It's helped Marvin and more than a dozen others. Once the student, he's now a teacher. He had a chance to go back to the mines, but unlike one of his classmates, he didn't take it. It's just that day to day or year to year, not knowing, you know, it's just a year I'm gonna get chopped and have to go start over again. At least with this, you're always gonna have computers. Computers aren't going anywhere. And as he teaches a new group to dig into this code, he has hope that a region once reliant on coal now has the tools to chart a new path. Stephen D'Souza, CBC News, Waynesburg, Pennsylvania.